Hi, how are you today? My name is Candace Murray. I'm a quilt pattern and textile designer. And today I wanted to sew a block of my new passion in plants, house plants, and thought it'd be fun to share this journey with you. And we can kind of combine the plant community and the quilt community to make um, a beautiful piece of art. So I want to first show you some plants that I've uh, accumulated and then get some inspiration from those plants to make a little block. And I'm so excited and I hope that you'll join me on this journey. Well, welcome to my dining room. This is a little accent wall that I've put together with a few of my favorite plants. And let's talk about them. So this is a Marble Queen Pothos and she has been such an amazing grower. So when I bought her, she was considerably smaller and I did not have the perfect pot for her. So as you can see down here, she's still in her grower pot that she came home with from the nursery. And I thought, well, I'll, I've got plenty of time. She won't grow that fast. I'll find her the perfect pot and put her in that. Well, I'll be darned, she has grown so fast, so high. Look at her. So this is new growth up here and we've got this one way up here still new growth and i'm just gonna let her grow i'm not happy that she's still in her nursery pot there's nothing i can do about it at this point without having to take down her tendrils and i'm just not gonna do it she's doing good leave her alone so i'm gonna zoom in so you can see some beautiful leaves from her she has this beautiful variegation it's like white with like this minty green she is stunning and she's put on some uh, new growth that has reverted. So sometimes these plants will revert back to a jade pothos um, if they don't get enough light. So I could cut this off back to the last variegated leaf and then hope that the new growth would also have variegation. But I'm just gonna leave her, you know, she's, she's doing great. I don't mind that she has flaws. I don't mind that she's reverted just a little bit. She's beautiful. And she is so quilt worthy, like such amazing inspiration. Okay, now that we've finished talking about my love plant, let's talk about the next one. This sweet baby here is a Monstera Adansonii. Look at her, isn't she beautiful? So she has these wonderful, man. she has these wonderful fenestrated leaves. You can see all those little holes. Isn't she precious? Look at that, she's gorgeous. Now, if you'll notice, I have this little yellow leaf here. Um, when the plant grows, if it's not getting enough nutrients from like the sun or the soil, it will take it from a lower leaf, one of the older leaves. So that's why I never cut off my yellow growth. I just, well, my yellow leaves, they're not growth. If they were yellow from the top, then we've, we've got issues, okay? But when they're yellow from the bottom, that's just natural. So I leave those yellow leaves on there until they are all crispy and just fall off on their own. Because I don't want to take away its source of nutrients, then it would just turn the next leaf yellow and that is just not good. So we just let her do her thing. She's a sweet little girl. Her name is Addie. Look at this big fenestration up here. Can you see that? Gorgeous. And I've got her on a moss, um, not really a pole, more like a board, a moss board. So she is super sweet. And would be a great leaf for maybe some applique. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. So let's put her back and let's move on and talk about some other plants. As you can see here, these are the only two plants that I have on this wall. That's okay, I've got plenty of living room left. Now I wanna just show you some of the plants that I have throughout the rest of the living room that don't fit over here, that maybe needed a little more light. The uh, Pothos and the Monstera can tolerate low light. Having said that, I do have eyeball cans in with grow lights in them um, because this wall does not get a lot of light. I do have 
east facing windows, one about 15 feet that way and one about seven feet this way. So they do get some light, but not a lot. Not enough for um, these other plants, like the calatheas. Look at this, gorgeous beauty. Now, if you are new to house plants, I do not recommend this plant um, as like your tester because you will, well, I, I don't wanna limit you. You might not kill her, but you might. And I'd like for you to have some success if it's your first time. Stick with a pothos, okay? Pothos, monstera, you can't go wrong. They're, they're gonna do well for you, okay? And once you get a little more experience, you can move up to a Calathea, and she is precious. And I just love the way that her leaves already look like they're pieces of art. Uh, they, they seriously look like those gel pens from the 90s. Somebody just took a gel pen and like wrote these little veins on her leaves. She's precious, she's gorgeous. Calathea ornata, I believe is her species name. I leave the labels on the pot or not. A, yeah. Yay. Because sometimes I forget. So she's precious. Great inspiration. And we'll put her back and we'll move on to the next. This one's a little baby Calathea. Look how sweet she is. So these little, these little things right here are new growth. They come in uh, all wrapped up and coiled up and those will hopefully open soon we've got one two oh here's one back here isn't that sweet she's about to open and i just love her leaves and how they already look like they're quilted see that it kind of looks like a um like a zigzaggy satin stitch so you are just ready to be quilted girl ready to be a piece of art now this is a calathea medallion and uh, she's not as big as my ornata but that's okay. We still like you. All right. Now this next plant is so delicious. Uh, I was laying on the sofa the other week and I thought, oh my gosh, I want to eat that plant up, um, which I would not recommend because I don't know that it's edible, but she's precious. And here she is. What do you think? So this is a fire. I think she's a fire splash spider plant. So you know the plants that you see at the store that have all the tendrils coming out, they kind of look like fireworks. They've got the little babies hanging from the stringers. Well, I don't like those. Something about the babies, the way the babies string out, it just looks messy to me. So I can't, I just don't. And um, this one does not have those runners. But look at her. I've, I've pulled her out of her pot. I don't know. Maybe she just reminds me of rhubarb or something. So super easy plant to keep. Medium house light would be fine for her. She doesn't require um, a ton of attention. I do like to keep her leaves dusted and clean. And I've been making little pots too because I just think that's so much fun. So this one, she's got a little snake with constellations on her. You know, us makers, man, we just gotta make. We just gotta make. And I don't sit still on the sofa. I'm either painting a pot, embroidering a leaf, coming up with new designs, uh, just art, art, art all the time. And creativity breeds creativity, so it's a good thing. Okay, we're gonna set you down. Oh, and by the way, I, I'm not sure that I mentioned, this plant's name is Katie. So my sister said, why don't you have a plant named after me? And I said, well, I thought that'd be kind of weird. And she said, yeah, you're gonna need to name a plant after me. So this is, the, this is my Katie plant. It's wild and colorful, just like she is. <laughs> oh, and kind of for my last plant for this video, this is a Scandapsis. So she is in the same family as the Pothos, um, Ariocee, Ariocee uh, is their kind of genre. And look at all that gorgeous foliage. She is a mixed pot of, of Exotica and uh, Silver Splash. So I believe these are the Exotica. And the Silver Splash are much more subtle. So let me find a little leaf. Here we go. You see that leaf? So subtle and so beautiful. 
So these require the same maintenance as a pothos. Uh, she's gonna be easy to take care of. I water her about once a week in the summer. In the winter, not quite as often, maybe once every other week because um, their soil doesn't dry out as fast. I think it's cooler temperatures, but I don't know. Um, she's doing good, yes. And they're super, super forgiving. Low to medium house lights, fine. If you can read a book in the room, it's gonna be fine for this plant. So now that we've, get, we've gotten kind of like all this inspiration, let's go back to the studio and make us a block. I'm so excited. Now we're back in the studio, so let's get started making our leaf quilt block. I got inspiration from my Marble Queen Pothos and printed it out on paper. Now we're gonna trace this with black ink just to get kind of a, a general outline of what we want our block to look like. So I'm gonna just trace the outside of my leaf. There we go. And the other side. These are my Prismacolor markers from college. I have not used them in a minute. And we're gonna do a cut right down the center like so. Okay, got a little off there. I wouldn't worry about it. So now I'm gonna look at these areas of solid color and the this more dappled color um, or, or a marbled color. So let's do maybe a line like that. Okay, and see how this one is kind of jagged here? But um, I don't really want to sew that the way it uh, looks in this photo, so I'm just going to come off from the stem and then pull down. Okay, so this will be my uh, variegated area, my solid area, and more variegated area. And I see I've got some solid down here too, so I'm just going to go ahead and boom, just like that. That looks good. And over here, the same. I want this to not line up so much, so I'm gonna come up a little bit like that. And again, kind of hit that in the middle and come down. So this will be my uh, variegated area. And from the top, another variegated area. Fun. So if you look here, we'll have variegated, solid, variegated, solid. Solid, variegated, solid, variegated. And I'll make this like a little PDF so you can download it if you want to or you can get inspiration from your own image and kind of follow these steps. And now that we've got our outline finished, let's pick out some fabric. I have not pre-chosen fabric, so everything that I'm doing here is live. Um, I either will or will not have fabric that will match this and I just feel like some creativity might come from not going to the store and buying like every specific thing that I need for this block and give it a little extra I don't know variegation or or variation so let's just look through my fabric and see what we have so here's my box of green and blue green fabric I like to keep all of my fabric separated by color and my blue box is just full so I decided to separate my blue greens from my blues but anyways we're doing green so let's look first the our hardest color to match is will be this uh, variegated color so let's see what I've got pull these out here um, I love that it's got glitter on it isn't that pretty uh, okay, neon. That might be more for a neon um, pothos. It's a beautiful texture in this. That's a nice color. I like that color. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's fun with the confetti. Delicious. Okay, grass. It's kind of like grassy colors. That's cool. This one's a little bit green. It, it might work. Oh, look at that. Little dots. Hmm. 
Oh, wow. Look at this. Now, I know that that's kind of like a diamond pattern. But look at how much this looks like this variegation. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, sure, it's not exact. This definitely has some darker green, more like a jade color in it. But I am loving this fabric. I do not remember where I got it. Uh, so that's typical typical life in the as a quilter that's fun too I wonder if I could use these two together maybe do one side one variegation and the other side a different variegation that would be neat okay so I'm gonna keep these out this is an ombre so I will not have enough of it to do the uh, the jade part let's see what else we have I have this beautiful grunge fabric. This was intended for a pigeon. Uh, a, I was going to do this like giant, like giant, giant, giant pigeon quilt. And anyways, I just got distracted and here we are. Love that. That's like almost the perfect jade color. Okay, I think that's going to be my color palette. But just in case, oh, that one's nice too. That darky dark. That was really dark. Also intended for my pigeon quilt that did not happen. It, it, we, well, well, I mean, I'm still living, so it hasn't happened yet. We'll say that. I think that's gonna be it. I have some fabric here that I made some other flowers with. Ooh, look at that. Not flowers, leaves. That's fun. That's like black, so that won't work. Let me check one more bucket. I also have like a CMYK bucket uh, that I did have some green in for my RGB, red, red, green, blue. Anyways, I don't see any. Oh, look, that's fun. Glitter. Um... And I have this big stack of the ombre fabrics that I just cannot bring myself to cut into. I don't know. I don't know why. Something about just all this fabric, it's like, it's expensive, it's beautiful. I'm afraid I'm gonna mess it up. So I have not cut into it yet. Is today the day? My heart is telling me that today is that day. Oh, I can't believe I'm going to do this. <laughs> it feels so, I don't know, exciting. Oh my gosh. Whenever I buy like an amazing set of fabric like this, I just feel like so intimidated to cut into it. Like I'm gonna mess it up and, and I don't waste money or something. So this is, what is this? I can't remember what type, what color, okay. What kind of collection is gelato? You know, I was thinking it was gelato and then I was like, well that's ice cream, that doesn't make any sense. So it's the Gelato Ombre by Maywood Studio. Look at this. You know what, is this gonna work? I don't know. I don't know that this works for this block. Ugh, see, and now I'm talking myself out of using this fabric. This is what I do every time. Ugh, life's short, cut the fabric, damn. <laughs> this wasn't the right green anyway, so let's pick a different green. All right, look at this. I think this might be our fabric. This might be our winner right here. This is gonna be it. I can't believe it. I cannot believe I'm cutting into this fabric. <laughs> so crazy. Okay, I'll put this up later. Spoken like a true quilter, just put that up later. I've gotten all of our pieces prepped for the next step. I took our original photo and blew it up 
by 200% to make this big piece. Um, I used my tabloid printer, blew it up 200% and then taped my pieces together. You could go to like um, Office Depot or Staples and they could blow up your image for you. Now I'm going to get to the cutting part. So I'm going to cut these pieces out and I've got my my base fabrics and my uh, variegation fabric laid out, already ironed. Uh, actually, I didn't iron this, but it'll be fine. Um, I liked these pieces, but I didn't have any long enough to be a fat quarter. Uh, so I'm just gonna piece those in separately if I need them. So I lay all of my fat quarters on top of each other. And the way this will work is we will have one block that will look exactly like this and then we'll have more blocks that will be variations of the same kind of cut pattern. And let's see, I need to cut this with my, um, with my paper, this is my paper rotary blade. And let's cut all of our sections out. Let's do our other side. And I tend to cut when I cut to the left. So if I've got um, a curve, like I'm gonna cut this, this direction. I'm not gonna cut it like this and go that direction. That's unnatural for me. But you just do what works for you. So for this leaf I started in the center, this leaf I'm gonna start on the outside and go backwards. There we go. So now we've got all of our pieces separated. Isn't that fun like a puzzle? And just so I don't get these confused, I'm gonna go ahead and put numbers on them. That sounds like a good idea. So let's see if I want, my right side will be my first, so I'll do a one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, and eight. I was afraid I would get some of these mixed up if I didn't number them. Now I've pulled back over my fabric. These are all three layers of the, the fabric that I'm using for this block. I want the darker part of my ombre to be at the top. So anything that's like directional, you wanna make sure that you have that laid in the correct direction. You technically don't need a template for this. You could just have a like a, an image in mind and just go for it. But I don't know, this is gonna be kind of fun, I think. So if we were gonna sew this and we wanted it to be exactly the size that our printed piece of paper is, we would need to separate each piece out and add a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, I am not getting that intense today. I just wanna have fun and cut up some fabric. So now I've got my fabric blade and I'm gonna cut around this template trying not to touch the paper, starting with the first line down the center. As I'm starting, I'm holding with my non-dominant hand all of the layers of fabric down.
Now that we have the outline of our, our leaf cut, we're gonna cut out each section. I'm pulling off this template and I'll save it for use later. Now we have all of our pieces set up and we're gonna arrange them in our original design. Watch this, this is, this is the magic right here. So exciting. And you know what would be useful? I'm actually gonna move this. Is putting all of my pieces that I'm not using for this block in order up here. So we're gonna have more than one block here. Look, there's that beautiful ombre coming through. So this, this is the ombre fabric and this is also the ombre fabric. I don't want to do two ombres side by side. So I'm gonna put that one. Or I could do this ombre there and do the dark one there. Hmm. Choices. Oh, I'll do it like this. Now I will be able to get three more leaves out of this variation out of that that pack right there. So I don't think I'm going to put this on a background just yet, but I am going to go ahead and stitch this together and show you what it looks like. Um, I do not like to sew with needles. I just start on the edge and just work my way around. So I'm gonna start sewing with uh, my ends off a quarter of an inch. So, and then just sew it around. I'm using a medium colored neutral thread. I'm not gonna back stitch. But I am going to cast on a little. Here's our first sewn leaf, sewn portion. I'm just going to uh, iron this all in one direction and here we have the first portion of our leaf and I've just pressed to one side and not uh, cut any darts in this okay. now let's add our next part So just to point out um, a quick little thing, see how this line doesn't doesn't quite match up? That's because we did not add seam allowances when we cut our leaf, and I'm just okay with that. 
I'm just going to trim it off when I get to the finished piece. Um, and it's just so much faster than adding seam allowances. And we are officially done with our first leaf block. Isn't she beautiful? I haven't decided yet if I want to applique her in a block or uh, piece her together in like a big quilt. So right now, because, because of this seam coming in, um, I'm not gonna piece her together because if I want to put a background around her, what I would do is sew the background in first and then sew this line. So for now, that's how she's gonna be. And hopefully I can add on to this and show you what she looks like when I get done with her. Um, thank you for watching. And if you would like to make this block with me, download the PDF that I've got. It will have the seam allowances if you choose to use them or make up your own pattern. The world is your oyster and just have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Bye.